If you have ever wanted to know what it's like to be a parent but were afraid of the responsibilities that come with it, well, animals also raise human kids, and the kids end up living like the animals that raise them. More and more, parents are getting on board with raising their kids in a more naturalistic way. This can lead to problems and conflicts, as well as positive outcomes. One of the most interesting things about parenting is giving your kids the gift of complete freedom that can have some pretty cool results. From wolves and chickens to dogs, here are 20 kids raised by animals. Number 20. Marina Chapman Marina Chapman claims that her mobility has decreased. Nowadays, climbing trees is difficult, let alone swinging from them. She might be older. She's probably 60 or 62 years old. She is unsure. Chapman is little, flexible, and sinewy. She sometimes has a slightly simian, slightly feline, and rather lovely appearance that isn't quite human. The fact that Maria Chapman seems unique from the rest of us may not surprise me. She claims that she had monkeys as pets during her formative years, just primates. She claims to have lived alone in the Colombian forest for five years. She is unclear because there is no accurate way to calculate this. She recalls learning how to survive on her own by eating berries and roots, snatching bananas left by the monkeys, spending the night in tree holes, and moving about on all fours. She claims that by the time hunters came to her aid, she had entirely forgotten her language, then life started to get complicated. She recalls how she suffered from acute food illness from tamarind and believes she would pass away in one of the most memorable passages in her book. She was in excruciating pain when an elderly monkey she now refers to as grandpa guided her to murky water. She drank the water, passed out, and started to feel better. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Oxana Malaya The life of Oxana Malaya serves as a fairly convincing example of how upbringing rather than nature predominates. Her parents abandoned her when she was only three years old, leaving her outside that night. She instinctively crawled to the first structure that may offer her warmth and protection, the dog kennel. Her disappearance went mostly unnoticed by her parents. She resided in the dog kennel and subsisted on her leftover scraps. Although she may have periodically wandered into her old family home like a stray and must have seen humans at a distance, she was no longer of their species. All meaningful existence was restricted in the kennel. It took a while for Oxana to start acting less and less like a human and more like one of the pack. A neighbor called the police five years later to report that dogs were rearing a young girl. When saved, she could not speak and moved like a dog while crawling on all fours. Home for the mentally challenged is where Oxana Malaya resides. Surprisingly, she doesn't spend much time with her pet dog. She takes care of the farm animals. She was taught how to walk straight, eat with her hands, and most importantly, communicate like a normal human being at an orphanage school. She hides things like a dog with a bone when offered something. Number 18. Rochamb Pinyang When Rochamb banished from her hamlet in northwest Cambodia in 1989, she was 8 years old. Her family recalls her as a pleasant, intelligent young lady who was talented at cutting banana peels into the forms of people, animals, and flowers. She left, as usual, to take care of the buffaloes one October morning, but she never returned. A woman with matted hair, also naked and filthy, emerged from the jungle 18 years later. She was reportedly found scavenging food while crawling along on all fours like an ape, according to one story. The half-human, half-animal woman from the bush has been the subject of many fantastical tales. She was allegedly followed by a wild, nude man brandishing a sword, cared for by a nomadic hills tribes while away from home, and protected by the spirit of the jungle. She only expresses herself clearly when she scratches her stomach to show hunger. She can use a spoon, but she can't wash her hands, brush her teeth, or use chopsticks alone. She receives affection from the family, but she doesn't return it. She is limp when being hugged. She covers her mouth when she is offered food when she is not hungry. Number 17. John Sabunya John Sabunya's life could not have gotten off to a worse start. Kabonge, born in a Ugandan community close to Bombo, 
witnessed his father kill his mother when he was only two years old and escaped to the woods for his life, cutting off all ties to society. Years passed before the truth of his disappearance and the lack of a family who complained was remembered. He encountered a young child of five years, three years later. In 1991, as a local tribe was looking for food in the jungle, immediately went back to the village to alert the rest of the tribe to the situation, and several people did so. When they arrived, they discovered not only a child who was reluctant to accompany them, but also a whole family of monkeys fighting and hurling rocks and sticks to stop the child from being carried. John Sabunya had been nurtured and adopted by a family of green veret monkeys for three years. They not only allowed him to join their group, but also taught him all of their traditions and the skills necessary for jungle survival. They finally succeeded in transporting John to a nearby Christian orphanage. John had hypertrichosis at the time, a typical condition in wild toddlers. His body was covered in scars and sores, he couldn't eat cooked food, and his brand-like knees indicated he hadn't yet learned to walk. John has adapted to human behaviors over eight years, learning to walk and further losing his hypertrichosis. Number 16. Victor of Averon An alleged feral child was discovered at 12 living in the woods close to Averon in southern France around 1800. Jean-Marc Gaspard Etard, a French surgeon, evaluated the child. It was recently proposed that the youngster, Victor, was autism based on his poor attention span, ability to speak speech sounds but not words, rocking when seated, trotting when upright, and other characteristics. Victor learned social awareness, verbal comprehension, and literacy skills through an intense educational program Itar designed that included sensory stimulation and repetitious physical activities. Itard's effort is regarded as a crucial early development in the special education of children with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Even though the results of this endeavor were disappointing, after five years, Victor could speak, read, and write only a few words and phrases and was moderately socialized. Edward Seguin's work helped spread Etard's impact further, and Maria Montessori's approach to the education of all children was partially based on the techniques both men had developed, beginning with works published by Etard in 1801 and 1807 and continuing through current literature by both scholarly and popular writers. Victor became the topic of countless books and articles. His life and education with Etard have also been dramatized on film and television. Number 15. Dina Sanishar. If you enjoy The Jungle Book, you should read about Dina Sanishar, the real-life Mowgli. Sanishar has lived his entire life among animals after being born in an Indian forest. Rudyard Kipling inspired Dina with the uplifting novel, although few people know how tragic Dina's life was. In this article, we'll examine Dina Sanishar's life in more detail and discover more about his remarkable tale. When Dina Sanishar was a little child in the 1800s, his life's journey began. In 1867, a pack of hunters was searching for a wolf in the woods of Uttar Pradesh, India. A naked child was hiding in the corner of a small cave that the wolf led the hunters to. They attempted to speak with the youngster but found that he could not do so and did not appear to comprehend their inquiries. Each second made it clear that the wolf boy was a feral child. Wolves had reared the boy and despite the peculiar circumstances of his upbringing, he was not the first feral child. Dina's discoverers took him back to their hamlet, where they displayed him for the neighborhood residents. The boy raised by wolves captivated and frightened the villagers at the same time. Number 14. Jeannie Wiley Her fate is unknown more than 40 years after she first showed up in a welfare office in Los Angeles County, but those who knew her to say she had a profound impact on their lives. In October 1970, she limped to the Los Angeles County Welfare Office, a stooping, withered weight with an odd habit of putting her hands up like a rabbit. But the girl had the welfare officer spellbound. They initially assumed autism. They then realized she was speechless. She spits and drools while incontinent. She possessed two sets of teeth that were almost full in such situations. Extra teeth are known as supernumeraries, an uncommon dental abnormality. She could not properly focus her eyes, extend her limbs, or chew or swallow. She was only 59 pounds, 26 kilograms, and it turned out that she was 13 years old. Jeannie was the moniker she went by to protect her identity. She was a young child, her insane father had bound her to a chair and placed her in a quiet room in a suburban
suburban home. He had thrashed her and barked at her like a dog while forbidding her to cry, speak, or make sounds. As Jeannie grew older, it is still unclear what happened to her. Has he developed her speech, interacting with the world, to be content? A small number of people are aware. Number 13. Peter, the wild boy who became a human pet. Peter, the wild boy, was found naked and alone in a German woodland in 1725. Peter was abandoned and became feral, unable to talk or walk on two legs. He moved on all fours. Peter was taken to London a year after he was found to be King George, human pet. Wolves or bears raised Peter, so he ate with his hands and refused to wear clothes, making him a spectacle. Peter's charm wore off quickly. The king invited Peter to dine with him, but grew tired of his poor table manners. Peter's inability to talk, read, and write hindered successful communication. Palace employees had difficulty getting Peter to wear his pricey velvet clothes and sleep in a bed. He slept on the floor. Peter tried to pickpocket court gores and touched artifacts meant for the king's hands. King George eventually supported Peter's retirement to a Hertfordshire farm. Peter was abandoned again, but he benefited by moving to the farm. Peter's farmers loved and cared for him. The farmers manufactured Peter a collar that read Peter the Wild Man of Hanover. Whoever brings him to Mr. Fenn in Berkhamstead will be paid. Peter tended to wander and the farmers feared that he wouldn't be able to communicate and return home. Although it's now considered dehumanizing to collar a human, the farmers did it for Peter's safety and well-being. Number 12. Marie Angelique Mémy Leblanc Marie Angelique Mémy Leblanc was known as the wild girl of Champagne, the maid of Chalons, or the wild child of Songhi. She lived in France in the 18th century. Some modern scholars have said that her story is either completely or partly made up. This makes her case more controversial than the stories of other feral children. But in 2004, the French author Sergei Aralis said it was real because he had spent 10 years researching French and American history in archives. Arose thinks that Marie Angelique lived in the forests of France for 10 years, from the ages of 9 to 19 before being found by villagers in Songhi. Campaign, in September 1731. He says that she was a Meskwaki Native American and was born in 1712 in what is now the state of Wisconsin in the Midwest of the United States. He also said she died in Paris in 1775 when she was 63. Aroles found in old records that showed she learned to read and write as an adult. This made her different from other feral children. Number 11. Ivan Mishakov. When the Soviet Union broke up in 1991, Russia was left with a nearly bankrupt economy and a big drop in living standards. The country had just become independent. Ivan Mishakov was born in the middle of these hard times. At night, all of the dogs would sleep with Ivan. Their body heat kept the little boy from getting too cold and protected him from the snow that often covered the city. But this wasn't all they had to do. Ivan was also protected by his dogs, who would attack anyone who tried to hurt him or steal the few things he and his pack had. This is how Ivan would live on the streets for the next two years. During the day, he would beg for food to give his pack. In return, they made him the pack leader and kept him safe. This amazing story about Moscow's wild child and his stray dogs quickly got to the city police, who tried three times to save Ivan. Ivan's pack came to his aid each time and helped him get away by fighting fiercely for him. Even though he had fleas and lice, Ivan was in surprisingly good health when he came in. This shows how well his dog's family took care of him. Ivan's speech didn't change much after two years with the pack, so it was easy for him to get back into society. Ivan is now a well-adjusted member of society. He has talked about his time with his pack on Russian and Ukrainian TV. Number 10. Amala and Kamala a child that has lived alone since they were very young and has little to no experience with human care, love, or social behavior, and most importantly human language, is said to be feral. Humans typically parents contain or raise feral offspring or are left alone in the wild. The two human-like monsters were captured after extensive preparation and challenges. They turned out to be two girls, Singh estimating their dogs to be around eight and one and a half years. The reverend and his wife were stationed in Mindpur, India, where the creatures were sent to an orphanage. They had a wolfish appearance according to Singh. They moved on all fours and developed calluses on their hands and knees. They like eating raw flesh and would steal it when the chance presented itself. 
They ate their food while squatting down and licked their lips to consume all liquids. They panted like wolves, their tongues hanging out of their thick, crimson lips. They held and prowled that night, seldom falling asleep after midnight. They could run as quickly as squirrels, and it was challenging to catch up to them. They completely avoided human society. After five years in the orphanage, Kamala started to show signs of intelligence. She comprehended the notion of color, recognized her glass among the others, knew some of the infant's names, and consumed food exclusively from her place. Number 9. The Syrian Gazelle Boy The Syrian Gazelle Boy Jean-Claude Auger, a Basque anthropologist, was crossing the Spanish Sahara, Rio de Oro, by himself in 1960 when he encountered some Nomadi nomads who informed him of a wild boy who lived a day's journey away. He followed the nomad's instructions the following day. He noticed a young child running nude on the horizon among a, a long cavalcade of white gazelles and huge bonds. The youngster periodically adopted an upright stance while walking on all fours, which suggested to Augur that he was abandoned or lost when he was around seven or eight months old and had already mastered standing. This astounding account of the feral boy, Gazelle Boy, reveals that he was only seven years old when he was abandoned by human society, which caused him to lose many of his early lessons and develop basic human skills. He was occasionally able to stand on two legs, though. The gazelle boy often walked on all fours, still he would occasionally adopt an upright stance, which gave Augur the impression that before he was abandoned or lost, he had already mastered standing. Like the rest of the herd, he was prone to twitching his muscles, scalp, nose, and ears in response to the even smallest noise. Number 8. Natasha Mikhailova Love's kin and the girl's 25-year-old mother, Yana Mikhailova, who hadn't seen her in two years, were detained on suspicion of neglect. One neighbor complained, they never let her out. We didn't know she existed. We never saw this youngster, but they had three incredibly ferocious and aggressive ones that took for walks. The girl, around the size of a toddler, was not listed with any doctors or hospitals. Despite their disbelief, experts claim that she is not mentally inspired despite the way she jumps on people and engages in dog games. Nina Yemelchukova, the center's director, reported that as she left the room, she leaped at the door and started barking, not just meowing or something. She can't control herself at the table. She throws away the spoon and eats straight off the plate despite having a healthy appetite and eating properly. Natasha avoids being around other kids and becomes tense when she hears strange noises. Natasha had lived in this apartment building where she seemed to be treated like a family dog. The dogs tried to protect her even if her father wasn't there. The child was living with an abject filth and the apartment smelled terrible. There were numerous dogs and cats and the child shared her home with them. Number 7. Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja has gone through numerous trials that regular people go through. He has worked in exploitative positions and is currently struggling financially as he enters retirement. When he was three years old, his father sold him to a goat herder after his mother died after childbirth. Pantoja spent 12 years coexisting with wolves in the Sierra Leone mountains of Andaluca, sleeping in caves and foraging for berries and mushrooms to eat. At 19, Pantoja, a resident of Galatia in northern Spain, was forced to leave his wolf pack. He was discovered and coerced into joining the military by the civil guard. Pantoja couldn't speak Spanish when the guard first encountered him, so he only made groans and jumbled noises to communicate. Pantoja has even attempted to return to his former Andalusian community since he enjoys his previous life in the outdoors. He claims that the wolves no longer welcome him because the area is now overrun with homes. He claimed there are wolves and if I call out to them, they will respond. But they will not approach me. I wear fragrance so I smell like people. He has worked exploitative jobs in the construction and hospitality industry since he entered modern civilization. He retired and now struggles to make ends meet on his pension, which doesn't cover necessities like house insulation. Number 6. Wolf Girl of Devil's River it all started normally enough in the Georgian countryside. Marlowe reluctantly consented to his romantic partner's wishes, but worried about the breakup of their successful alliance. A woman saw the same thing within the year, a naked girl crawling on all fours with two wolves. Residents began combing the difficult area because they weren't so quick to discount an adult eyewitness. Two hunters in a canyon captured the wolf girl. She initially cowered like a rabbit, according to a story in the 1937 folklore collection Straight Texas. 
She growled and spat like a wildcat after that. She also struggled, biting and scratching. Her hands and feet were bound when a snarling wolf unexpectedly rescued her. A fortunate shot stopped the rescuer in its tracks, causing the prisoner to lose his consciousness. In a cramped room of a run-down ranch house, she came into the presence of numerous interested men. The girl recoiled in a corner, refusing their offers of food, water, and a blanket until they left the room and shut the door behind them. A lone wolf initially responded to her call in the distance. Number 5. Sujit Kumar Have you ever seen the boy who eats like a chicken? Sujit Kumar was tied down and treated like an animal, which made his life miserable. Before an Australian woman changed his life, people called him Chicken Boy. Even though Sujit Kumar is 32, the people who care for him call him Chicken Boy. The Fijian has never learned to talk and is just starting to act like a human. People say he spent his childhood locked up in a chicken coop. Psychologists and a group of American behavioral scientists have been looking into Kumar's strange past, which, if true, would be one of the most tragic cases of child abuse in Fiji. Elizabeth Clayton, whose husband, the New Zealand mountain climber Roger Buick, died on Everest in 1998 is one of the people caring for Kumar. She says that when she first met Kumar, he pecked at his food and crouched down like he was roasting. His fingers are bent inward from scratching in the dirt. He talks by clicking his tongue quickly and doesn't seem to care much about what's happening around him. Number 4. Shamdeo The Times of India said that the wolf boy's name was Ramu. He was discovered on all fours in the presence of wolf cubs in 1976 when he was a little youngster. He had matted hair and nails that resembled claws, indicating that he had been raised with them. He learned to bathe and dress while under their care, but he could not communicate. He would break into the poultry coops covertly at night. Scholars who disagreed claimed that people merely wanted to accept a ridiculous Tarzan myth. They said that the wolf boy was merely retarded. On the main page, however, his obituary was published immediately after the article on Rajiv Gandhi's intended trip to Moscow. Stories like this are occasionally published in the gloomy times of India, which educated Indians read over their morning tea before discussing with the same matter-of-factness as the oppressive heat. They don't believe the stories though, many don't. They accept the unknown in peace. With its large population, high mortality rate, and reincarnation belief, this nation's culture is unrestrained by the tyranny of Western rationality. People frequently remark stranger things have happened in India. Number 3. Danielle Lyro No love is more precious than a parent's for their child, but the sad reality is that some parents are abusive and don't have their child's best interests at heart. For the first six years of Danielle Danny Lyro's life, her mother held her captive with their home. Once found, this youngster was described as feral since she could not eat, read, or write. The investigators who found Danny in July 2005 believed it to be the worst instance of child abuse they had ever witnessed. After a neighbor spotted the trapped child gazing out of a shattered window, Danny was located. Upon entering the home, the detectives discovered her in a tiny room about the size of a closet, surrounded by filth, vermin, and her legs smeared in her feces. Danielle was a victim of the filthy surroundings she had been living in, curled up in a moldy mattress covered in lice, maggots, and flies. The girl's weight was only 46 pounds, and the physician said she could not speak, walk, or eat. Danny had several developmental problems due to the circumstances she was raised, which complicated her upbringing. This was undoubtedly challenging for the Lyros, who had no idea what parenthood would entail. Number 2. Feral Child Raised by Animals Found in Barek Feral children are kids who live in the wild and don't have any contact with people. They are not unheard of, but they are rare. But a story about an 8-year-old girl in Uttar Pradesh who lived with monkeys had just come to light. About two months ago, the girl was found in the Katarnia Ghat forests of Barek. During a patrol in the Motorpur range of the Kataria Nat Wildlife Sanctuary, Sub-Inspector Suresh Yadav found her with a group of monkeys. Oksana Malaya is a Ukrainian woman raised by dogs after her alcoholic parents left her as a child. She was saved from a kennel. She acted like a dog and was called a feral child because she ran on all fours and panted with her tongue out. The girl didn't seem scared of the monkeys and screamed when Mr. Yadav tried to save her. But the police officer saved her and took her to a district hospital. Chief Medical Officer D.K. Singh said she eats and moves like an animal and runs away when she sees someone. She has marks on her body and seems to have lived with animals for a long time. She has been taught to walk, but she still moves around sometimes on all fours. Number 1. Sasha T. 
In Russia, social workers cared for a two-year-old boy raised by goats. The malnourished wild child named Sasha T was kept in a room with the animals by his mother, Marina, 40, and Rostov. He did not know how to speak, hold a spoon, or use a potty. Officials were shocked to hear that he played with and slept with the goats. When he was taken to the hospital, he wouldn't sleep in a cot, didn't know how to play with toys, and was afraid of adults. He was sitting in the room without any clothes on. Every area of his life might have been his last. That house was very cold, very dirty and smelly. We just grabbed him and took him quickly to the hospital in the city. People say that the boy and the goats lived in the same room. Doctors said that his brain hadn't grown to the way it should have because of how he's lived. The boy from Mowgli weighs a third less than a typical boy his age. He tried to break every window and piece of furniture he could find. He couldn't talk or hold a spoon, they said. He didn't even try to play with his toys because he didn't know what to do with them. Sasha isn't the first child to be raised by animals. We've seen a lot of them. Do you ever imagine animals raising some kids? What are you thought now that you know? Share your view in the comment section below.